get what the other candidate was talking about, Mr. Freeman, was we would have to um, reverse our charter and become a town. In local towns, people then can go in and go line number by line item by line item and change the amount that they want to give. If they say, I don't want to give a million dollars to the police force this year, I'm only going to give 800000 they as a right, everyone in the room stands up and votes yay or nay. But we are a, a city, so that option comes down to 15 people, and that's up to the, the voters. If they don't like those 15 people, is to vote them out and get people that are more representative of them or will vote the way they want them to do. Time. Mr. Sutherland, same question, <clears throat> two minutes. Could you repeat the question? What can be done to reduce the tax burden on homeowners in Keene? Just say no to some of this out of control spending. Uh, if, you, if anybody listened to uh, WKPK this morning, AM radio, uh, they had some people from Public Works on, and they were talking about uh, the idea of, and I, I didn't listen to the entire show, but the best I could garner was they were talking about building some aquaculture uh, tilapia fish farm on city property. And the overall cost, they said, they looked at the, the size of, of the facility would, would, would be optimal at a, a full acre at a cost of about $3.4 million. <laughs> Give me a break. Uh, I've been to some of these city council meetings. We see what the, the transfer station's doing. They talk about what we can do with the waste and how to turn waste into money. That is a cost center right now to the city of Keene. It will probably always be a cost center, but, but, but trying to compete in the market for tilapia fish production is not the way out of uh, increased spending. We do not belong as a city trying to compete against a free market. I opposed the uh, building of tea hangers down at the airport because I felt that is not the goal of the city to be in, in plain garage management. You know, if we want to lease the land to somebody else who will take the risk to build those and fill those spots, that's fine. If we want to lease the land to some aquaculture uh, business that's going to risk their, their capital, that's fine. But to add city employees and to, to look for a business partner to try to enter into a competitive marketplace, that's not where the city of Keene belongs. We're doing that in the parks and recreation right now. We've got, I mean, I've got kids who play soccer. There is a... a a, a great soccer program out there called the uh, Cheshire Soccer Program, whatever. This, the Parks and Recreation has their own. Park, Parks and Recreation has their own everything trying to compete against all these other existing um, uh, free market opportunities for athletics. Thank you. Time. Final question, uh, as far as moderated questions go, begins with you, Mr. Sutherland. Yeah. If the city of Keene were to eliminate two departments, and this could be eliminate or privatize. Which two would you eliminate from the city? Well, first, I've, I have proposed, and the city claims they've taken into consideration, maybe the city councilors could update us on this, but I've proposed that, that we should be minimizing the tax collection department uh, as, as part of the arm of the finance uh, department. It costs this, the city taxpayers a, a tremendous amount of money just to collect money. Um, there are methods called the internet, been around for kind of a while, and there are other cities leveraging this technology to collect money. We could still have an employee collecting money at the, at the city if you don't have the internet or other means to pay your bill, perhaps by phone, but it just seems that, to me that that's uh, a no-brainer. The city has told me, the city manager, John McLean, has told me that he's taken it under consideration and that they're working on it. Well, I don't know how long it's going to take before they have finished inventing this wheel. Anyway, that's one. Parking is, a, is an issue that I think needs to be looked at tremendously. Uh, we've got a, a, a problem here. The city doesn't want to increase uh, rates. They, they, we spend a great deal of trying to just collect money. I, I, I would challenge the city to suggest that it costs more money trying to collect the money than what it, what it costs uh, you know, more money to manage the system to collecting the money than what we gain from it. So I think it's something that we, we should consider outsourcing, whether it's we sell land for somebody to build a parking garage and take over the parking and, and maintenance of, of parking spots in the city. I don't know. 
but I think it's something that we should look at. Thank you. Mr. Roberts, same question, two minutes. The first thing, the reason we, we have a problem with the collection department is that up at the State House, there's been a number of bills that would authorize um, local communities to use the internet, to use debit, to use credit cards. And right now, the state has not been able to has not been able to give that to them, or has refused to give it to them. And because we're not a home rule state, we can't do a number of things on our own. And the other two things that I would look at as public works, I would not eliminate public works, but I would ask the question: Is why does the county have to have a public work? Why does the school department? Why can't all three of them be combined like they are in a lot of cities? And the same thing with the IT department. Why do we have three or four different IT departments between different governments here in the, um, the city? Plain and simple, I think the IT at the school, the IT at the city, the IT at the county, they could all be combined together. Because at the end, when you look at your tax bill, that's the number at the bottom. And we have duplication and triplication of IT and at, at public works. And there's no justification for that. It would only take a little modification for them to be able to cover the services of all. For example, if you use the IT and personal, is payroll. <clears throat> Why do you need three different HR people, a different payroll system? Everybody's getting paid from the taxpayers, so there should be able to be one payroll department to take care of all of them. Thank you. Mr. Jacobs, same question. Two minutes. Uh, I agree with Councillor Roberts that uh, I don't believe I would eliminate any departments. I do think that, uh, and there has been some uh, effort, for instance, I know that the Public Works and the Parks Department have worked together on things like mowing lawns and sharing equipment, and I think that's a good uh, direction to go in, and, and I like what Councillor Roberts is saying about, uh, and I know we have had conversations with other government entities around uh, duplication. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I, I do see some purpose to, to all of the departments. My, my concerns have to do with the efficiencies and, and finding ways to, uh, to do better. And I, and I think those concerns are shared by the people in the departments. You know, this, this notion that each department is an island unto itself, I think we're getting away from that. At least that's what I hear from, from the, the city staff. And, uh, uh, but it, you know, it takes a while. You have a, a culture that, that develops within an agency. And, uh, so it takes a while for people to, to learn to think beyond themselves, but uh, I, I, I see it happening and, and I want to encourage that uh, because I think uh, it would be good for the taxpayers and it would, uh, it would maintain uh, the services that we need. Thank you. Mr. Freeman, two minutes. I can think of two right off uh, the top that can easily go. Parking is definitely one of them. The other would be the uh, code enforcement uh, department as well. Uh, parking, you could very easily solve the par parking issues in the city by allowing business owners, property owners, for instance downtown on Main Street, to have control over the spaces uh, that, are, that are adjacent to their properties. You could sell off, uh, you know, auction off the existing parking structures and lots, and then allow businesses downtown, downtown associations, you know, these folks, the people who are in it every single day and who know what they need to do to satisfy their customers. Let these folks handle uh, the parking issues and get the city out of it. Also, code enforcement. Uh, these people go around and they make a business of harassing folks uh, for a living, people who are just trying to do business or people who are just trying to enjoy their homes and their properties. Uh, there are, believe it or not, plenty of places in the country and even in New Hampshire there are places that do not have zoning and everything's okay. It's really just there to control you. It's uh, people who believe they know what's best for you, trying to tell you what to do and threatening you with force if you don't do it. Uh, let's, you know, the big ob objection, of course, is going to be, well, you know, what if properties are unsafe? Well, let's let business owners and, and insurance companies and buyers be the ones who are concerned for that. As a buyer of a property, I want to make sure I'm getting a good property. I'm going to bring in an inspector. I'm going to make sure that that property is okay before I buy it. It should be buyer beware. If I want to hire somebody to help me with that, I should be free to do it. We don't need the city going around and harassing people. Thank you. Uh, before we go to questions from the audience, I would just like to remind everyone that we do have sample ballots for each of the five wards. There is also a straw poll ballot 
and you might get confused at first look at the straw poll ballot because it's using two different types of electoral systems on the same ballot. There's one column for approval voting where you can mark for as many candidates as which you approve. Even if there's one person or five people to be elected, if you approve of two or 12 or whatever number of candidates, you can mark for each candidate for which you approve in the column with the AV inside the box. And there's also the instant runoff or IRV column. So there you would rank the candidates in order of preference. You can rank as many or as few candidates as you like. Uh, anybody in the audience have questions for any of the candidates? Each candidate will be allowed to answer three questions. I just have a general question. Um, I know the school, the school budget, I'm pretty sure it's not controlled by the city council, but that there was $2 million um, extra and it was on the front page. Just any comments on money management and, and how, how that was came to be and stuff like that? The question was about the $2.6 million surplus from the school board budget, which even though that's uh, not something overseen by the city council, do any of the candidates have comments regarding uh, surpluses of government budgets? I think the school budget is out of control uh, personally and I, I wish there was something the city council could do about it. Uh, again, if we go to that voluntary uh, system of collections that I was proposing earlier, then uh, the school would also be affected by that, meaning that uh, people would be able to voluntarily contribute the amount they want, uh, the amount that they think that they're worth. And I think that would really change how uh, the whole situation plays out with these ever-increasing budgets. I agree that it's a concern. I, I try and express that concern uh, by speaking with uh, members of the school board and by voting in uh, the school board elections. It, it isn't really uh, a matter before the city council, and uh, so I'll leave it at that, I guess. This is um, where the vote is ruled. Um, six years ago, when I was head of the finance um, committee at the school board, I cut $1.6 million out, which in the default budget, which the voters um, more graciously voted to defeat the budget, so they pay $1.6 million in taxes, and they overwhelmingly threw me out of office. This year, I was on the um, finance committee, and I said, wait a minute, we spent $2 million less. So when I made the proposal, I just gave them what they had the year before, no increase, and then later on we had some other problems from the state, so we gave them a half a percent increase. And then the voters reward you. I just barely won by only eight votes. So the school board voting system is totally different from the city council. The city council people, the city, when they vote for city council, they take a lot of things in consideration. The school board, it, it all comes down to how much money are you willing to spend. And if you cut money, you're going to lose. And I would, like I said in the paper, I was totally upset that you don't find $900,000 in three weeks. No business does that. That's a really serious credibility issue with me, and I think it's a credibility issue with a lot of voters. How do you come up with almost a million dollars in three week time? There's a term used in the government called padding budgets. And I don't know if you've heard this before, but uh, you know every year the city council here um, sets a budget, an operating budget, and every year they seem to find money. If you look line by line, you will see consistently for a number of different um, cost centers where uh, a department will put aside a thousand dollars, for example, for paying for new furniture, and every year consistently they might spend two hundred and forty-five dollars. Instead of setting the budget the next year for $245, they'll consistently raise it to $1,000. Over time, that money, money doesn't get spent, and then you end up with found money or leftover money. Um, if anybody was paying attention to the last school board election, uh, I believe one of the, the items on the ballot was is if there was any leftover money, it was to go to the athletics department. Is that correct? No. Athletics? Uh, where, uh, where does it go? If, if you allow me to... 
Certainly. Just ask, to, to which department was that money to go? That is a yes and no answer because that twenty thousand dollars that was going at the people that was the money that was raised by selling advertisement at the um, alumni field. And so that money, instead of going into the general budget, was sent into this one that would reduce the future athletic budget for uniforms and other things. Right. So, so the city, um, so the school district has already pulled out a separate maintenance budget. They've now pulled out an athletics budget. And now we have this leftover money that was possibly padded. I'm not going to say that that's exactly what they did. But it's kind of curious that they first asked voters to approve this separate budget where surpluses would go, and then suddenly we have a huge surplus, and it suddenly filled that budget. So instead of having a consistent singular budget, the school now has three budgets, is that correct? No. The maintenance budget? That's a line The operating budget, budget right? But, but, but you guys have taken these things all out with voter approval. So I would suggest that, that this certainly needs, and not just the school, but also the city certainly needs line by line assessment of where all this money is supposedly needed and where it all goes. Thank you. Uh, Carl Jacobs has informed me that he will need to leave at one o'clock. Uh, there should be time for one more question uh, that everyone would be able to answer. Yes. Um, something that doesn't get talked about very often, especially up at City Hall, is the continual and progressive atrophy of Keene's industrial and manufacturing base. <clears throat> Tremendous amount of loss of jobs. You can name over the last 30 years perhaps 10 fairly significant industries that used to do business in, in Keene and employ large numbers of people that are gone. 